So in this series of videos, we're going to look at how to use HTML and CSS to produce a web page. And to do that, you're going to need some sort of tool to create the web page. Web pages are just um, text documents, so you can use something simple, a text editor such as Notepad. There are obviously more expensive tools available, things like Dreamweaver. But a good free alternative to a tool such as Dreamweaver is this, which is a Microsoft Expression Web. It's a free download. Look in the link at the top of the, uh, the video. Um, and I think it's a better alternative than some of the other free ones such as Composer. Now because it's slightly older, it came out before um, HTML5 was um, fully adopted, um, you need to change the default settings um, to support those things. So it will support HTML5 and CSS3 or at least the draft version but you need to change the default settings. So if you go to Tools and Page Editor Options, for some reason it takes a little while to open this on my um, PC, there we go. Uh, if you go to the authoring tab, then down the bottom here you've got the document type declaration. So I don't see any reason not to choose HTML5. It's the latest and in some ways it's simpler than the previous versions. It includes um, extra things such as video and sound, uh, the ability to add those without plugins. And then at the bottom we've got the CSS uh, schema. So I would go for the draft version of CSS3. Obviously it's not the finalized version but it contains most of the things you're likely to use. One of the good things about um, using a sort of uh, editor that allows you to change the code is that you can actually put any um, you know codes in there, any CSS um, attributes that aren't supported by Expression Web for example um, because you can just type them in. So anything that's you, know, you can use techniques that are bang up to date even if your editor doesn't support them. So that's um, HTML5 and CSS3. Um, you can also do things like change the default font size. So uh, notice at the top there my um, editor font is quite large. I've done that for the, the benefit of the video to make it easier for you to read but um, you might want to adjust the size for yourself. So if you go to the default fonts you can uh, you can do that kind of thing. So um, just like Dreamweaver, you've got these different views. So you can use Expression Web like a word processor in Design View. These uh, things are also available on the View menu if you go to Page. Um, so you've got the Design View, um, so you can just type in, you know, sort of My Page. Um, you've got the Code View, uh, where you can type in the HTML and use it pretty much like Notepad. Or you've got a split view, and that's my uh, prepared uh, pre preferred view, because you can type in in the bottom, and it shows you what the page looks like. But as you're typing, you can see that the um, the code appears at the top. So also, as you get more into it, you'll probably find that there are things you want to tweak uh, in the code. Um, so the code view is quite useful, but to type in things like paragraphs in the code view gets a bit laborious. So it's laid out. You might recognise some familiarity. Uh, or some similar you know, th things you uh, are used to from Word as it's a Microsoft product. But I, I'd be a little bit careful about using these things at the top. So I'll go into this a bit more in other videos. So I would probably only use um, this kind of style selector, paragraphs, headings, etc. I wouldn't use um, the font and the size, and I'll explain a little bit more about that uh, later on. Um, I would use these, uh, bold, italic, underlining, I wouldn't use any of the others except maybe bullet points. And then over here, I would probably just go for um, images and links. For everything else, I would use CSS, and I get into the habit of doing that right from the start. Um, you can use these things. If you, The problem with using these things at the start is they do work, um, but if if you use uh, these and select fonts and sizes, etc., from the drop-downs at the top, um, you tend to find that... Um, Expression Web and indeed other tools like Dreamweaver start to create all these styles called unhelpful things like Auto Style 1 and Auto Style 2 and it very quickly becomes unmanageable. So if you get into the habit right from the start of creating your own styles using CSS it all becomes much more manageable and it's much clearer what's going on. So just before we finish um, our look at um, Expression Web um, that we'll have a look at what the, the different sections um, do. So we've got the, the bottom section here is what the page is going to look like and the top is the code that generates that page and we'll come back and have a look at what these uh, things in the triangular brackets mean. At the top right we've got the things that you can add to the page. So if you want to add a, a div for example you can just drag it onto the page and when you select things notice at the bottom it has a little label at the top corner which shows you what those things are. Um, the bottom right uh, that's where you can apply styles. So that's where you enter your CSS and we'll look at that uh, much more in the later videos. And then the bottom left 
is the properties of the currently selected uh, item. So if I select that uh, div there, for example, these are the properties, so the class, the ID, etc., of that thing. Now you're probably not going to use most of these, so the most useful things are going to be class and ID, and basically they're used to give these things a name. So move on to the later videos and have a look at how we actually use HTML and CSS to create the page. But you can follow those videos even if you're not going to use ExpressionWeb, if you're using Dreamweaver, or even if you're using something like Notepad or Notepad++.